I've had, I've been surprised by a couple of requests um, for me to point the camera around the boat a little bit, so maybe uh, for, <laughs> for better or worse, or for worse, that's what I could do today. There's not a lot of other things going to be happening around here, so have a look at the inside of the boat. So this is how it looks for going sailing. Um, a bag here with pilot book, spare charts, um, ooh, paperwork, the reeds, almanac, all that good stuff for, for navigation. Um, moving around here we have this large green bag which is a cockpit cover. Which I haven't used so much uh, recently since I've got this uh, coaster for the longboat cruiser which didn't have the spray hood for the longboat cruiser the uh, the tent was really very useful and I still use it now if I'm going to be somewhere more than um, two nights and I want some protection from the weather it covers the entire cockpit I can stand up hang out wet equipment generally move around freely which is uh, quite nice when you're on board for a week or two at a time. This dry bag here contains lots of warm clothing. Um, behind it there's another dry bag, two sleeping bags, my camp seat which uh, helps make the, the living space more comfortable. Moving around here, the chart, chart holders usually here and then I have my uh, foul weather locker there we go oil skins and um, down here is food so in here I have a stove and all the food that I need or well, some of the food that I need um, and down here there's a basket or I should say a, a plaster is plastic oblong bucket fresh food and it's where I put my sandwiches and uh, anything else I want to eat whilst I'm sailing, readily available. Likewise there's a thermos with, with hot water there. Um, all of this stuff is tied in so it can't go wanging around the cabin once I'm healing over. Bits of bungee all over the place. So when we're not sailing all the clutter goes onto the starboard side and it leaves this long space here which is where obviously where I sleep. Uh, the camp seat makes life very comfortable. I can sit uh, and read a book quite happily for a whole evening. Um, and that stays inside. Sometimes I think it'd be, well I know it'd be comfortable to have it out on deck as well but uh, I go to a lot of effort to keep the humidity out of the cabin so I don't want that on on deck even uh, on a dry day there's so much salt out here inevitably it would bring humidity back into the cabin and I'm a bit particular about that um, so elsewhere looking around little lockers for uh, radio and here we've got uh, bits and pieces mobile phone knives head torches Navigation corner, charts, um, passage notes, tides, there's a local pilot book to the, the River Yelm, etc, etc, fire extinguisher, and then in here there's all sorts of stuff, um, wash bag, there's a nice little um, locker that, and uh, I've got a torch, there you go big powerful torch to let people know that I'm around or maybe if I'm looking for something in the dark maybe a mooring or whatever. Uh, there are actually there's a toolkit in there another like a chandlery box and a sailmaker's bag as well which is probably a bit redundant but that uh, stems from my uh, 
square rigger days. Um, again, in contrast to the longboat cruiser, which didn't really have a lot of stowage, here there are lots of little nooks and crannies. Um, here I've got the first aid kit and my uh, hip bag with uh, my wallet, car keys, etc. Over to this side. Um, I did want to, uh, at the outset I was uh, really thinking seriously about having a boat with no electrics at all. I like that idea. Like Bill Churchhouse on the, the Jester Challenge. Totally agree with everything he was saying about uh, the, con the pros of not having electricity. However, um, I did want a fish finder or a depth sounder. Um, that's a nice piece of equipment to have. So once you've got a battery and you think, okay, what else can I have? <clears throat> well, what else would uh, make life easier? So there are chargers for the, uh, there's like a cigarette car type uh, charger, USB charger, um, VHF charger, and then we have uh, depth and cabin light. Binoculars, a couple of GPS, and um, another l little locker over here for bits and pieces. Um, down here, the locker in there, it's more toolkits. Well, I say more toolkits. There's um, a box with all the electrical bits and pieces in. Um, now the boat's up to speed, I, I can get rid of some of this clutter because I don't need so much in the way of tools. Um, there's also a shore connector there for shore power and a battery charger. Um, chart stows here and then another one of these lockers back here. A couple of dry bags um, containing, uh, there's a solar charger and there is a tablet. And then in this small one here we've got chargers for mobile phones, camera, um, that sort of thing, uh, charges in general, uh, and I've got my little black, uh, my black anchor ball in there as well, which again is not something that gets a lot of use. Um, around here, this is to, to hold a tablet, um, and the idea being I could sit and watch a film when I'm stuck in port in bad weather. Uh, so. Uh, I've never actually used that, there never seems to be time. And then there's a little holder here for a speaker, a Bluetooth speaker. Well, other bits of storage which I haven't mentioned, I mean it's, uh, it's pretty mundane but uh, up forward there, another dry bag which has uh, spare clothes in and um, a couple of little rucksacks, one of them is a dry bag again for going ashore, um, particularly in the dinghy if you need to go and get some shopping. All that stuff needs to be protected from the, the sea and all the rain, so dry bags. There's a lot of dry bags on board. Um, something else I gave a lot of thought to was, to, um, was where to put the anchor chains and um, I certainly didn't want to have the chain aft in the stern lockers. Um, there's already enough weight back there, sometimes I've got up to 20 litres of fuel, um, plus the outboard and other sundry items, so uh, I didn't really didn't want the chain back there. I didn't want it on the bow either, I've tried that before, but it's, there's too much weight on the bow. Um, the reason I say there's too much weight is because I've got a lot of chain, and again it's something I gave quite a bit of thought to. Um, uh, having experienced uh, lee shore situations before um, where really you, you need to equip yourself with a, or you need to be equipped with a decent sized anchor and plenty of, uh, plenty of chain and road to have any chance of holding yourself off the lee shore. So although uh, this is probably overkill in some respects, um, I decided I wanted to uh, uh, take a deep breath, 15 metres of 8mm um, chain 
and 55, 60 metres of road. Um, now part of the idea behind this was when passage making, when you come to the end of a tide, if there's no wind um, to help you butt on and make, he make headway against the tide, the idea there was to be able to anchor in, uh, in the position you found yourself in. Could be a couple of miles offshore and 30 meters of water. Just drop the hook and sit there for however long it takes before the tide becomes favorable again. Um, most of the sailing I do is by myself, so uh, I also thought I could use this excessive, maybe, amount of chain as ballast. So what I did, in fact, was get uh, two lots of 15 meters, and um, e each 15 meters of chain has, again, 55, 60 meters of road. Now, I don't really expect to have to, to use that, but it's nice to, to know that I could actually anchor in about, uh, let's think, 140, um, 20 metres of water in a blow and expect to stay there overnight. Uh, seven times the depth, the expected maximum depth. That's the required length of road. It really is very simple. I've, I see some uh, some methods of calculating the amount of anchor road that you'll need in any given situation, which seem uh, very mathematical and uh, unnecessarily complicated. But uh, I've always been led to believe that seven times the maximum depth for an overnight stay should do the trick. Um, anyway, so let's have a look at that. So yeah, that brings us to the anchor stowage, um, which is down here. Um, I think uh, both sides of the centreboard casing, we have this marvellous amount of stowage. And uh, I got rid of the stove. I could never imagine cooking in the cabin. Uh, it just makes too much condensation. So I decided that this is where the anchor um, the anchor chain and road I've just been talking about, that's where it goes. So we've got uh, one set here, and there's the end so I can find it easily, and a second lot of uh, 15 meters of chain on this side. So its main function really is ballast. Uh, it stiffens the boat up a little. We've got about uh, 20 kilograms of weight either side, low down in the centre of the boat. And as always, a lot of these things are compromised. Um, you might say, okay, well, what do you need to do um, to let go the anchor in a hurry? Anchor needed in a hurry, take the chain, feed it through the fore hatch. I've got a little bit of carpet I can put over the bottom to protect the sill. Um, I can attach the anchor to the chain inside the cabin and actually deploy it from inside the cabin and then I just let it run. At the risk of letting some rain in I'll open the fore hatch and there's our anchor. If the anchor is not needed in a hurry, um, it's actually a fairly simple matter to take this box, the toolbox, out of the way. We've got 10 litres of water here as well, life jacket, and everything's wedged in with a, a spare fender. Anyway, the anchor locker, if you like, three steps. First of all, I plop it up here, then I go outside. I put it up on the, the cabin roof, then I make my way carefully past the, uh, the cabin myself and um, from the foredeck I can sit down on the cabin and easily get the, uh, the anchor chain uh, locker 
and put it on the foredeck and uh, prepare the anchor at my leisure. It's perhaps a little bit of a faff but it's really not too bad. Um, if I'm stopping overnight that's generally what I'll do. If I'm just going ashore for a couple of hours I will go to the stern locker and uh, there's a lighter anchor in there. There's a Danforth with a couple of meters of chain and um, about 30 meters of road and that's that's good enough just for a short stop. Uh, still on stowage, those of you who know Drascombs will know that beneath the bunk cushions there are some small lockers and um, I've got tons of line on here, far more than I need, I really should get rid of it. Um, there's the bar and so we can orientate ourselves, there we go, here's the fore hatch and underneath here, well there's usually infill board here, I've got all this food and this is a this is an outer jib. When I was preparing the boat for this trip I um, I cleared a lot of the old food out and I came across a tin of pilchards sell by date 2014 um, so that's seven years over so I opened it very carefully sniffed the contents, poured them out, checked the inside of the tin for any um, any holes or rust uh, nothing at all, they tasted great and um, no ill effect on me whatsoever <laughs> um, finally in this bazaar of bazaars um, well you can see the all the food we just looked at is under here and um, it's good storage for the charts and then we've got these two boards one and two uh, they are infill for the cockpit so uh, you can see you place them on this lip around here it fills in the cockpit and makes a good sleeping platform um, yeah obviously cruising on one of these boats you can't really sleep two people in the cabin there's too much clutter in here so uh, these boards solve that problem um, they've been used but I think if I was really cruising again by myself um, which I, as I said I generally am I'd, I'd be getting rid of quite a lot of the things that we've had a look at here because they were uh, on board as the boat was coming up to up to speed being tweaked with bits of equipment and little experiments here and there and now it's time to get rid of some of that clutter <laughs> 